get the language right tonight. Book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. So the person that we call Jesus Christ, which is our Lord and Savior, he has a revealing of him written by John the Revelator. So it says the revelation, meaning the revealing of Jesus Christ, which God sent to John to what? Tell what? To Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things <coughs> which must shortly come to pass. So why would God give a, a revealing of Christ? To show unto his servants of things which must shortly come to pass. Because in the future, there will be a distorted of the understanding of the true gospel of Christ. What he looks like, the people of the Bible, and who is salvation for? Read on. And he sent unto, and he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John. Now let's go to jump to verse 11. Read. Verse 11. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Read. And what thou seest. Right in a book. So John the Revelator, so the Most High is telling John, what you see, John, what you see in the depiction and the revealing of my son Jesus Christ, write it in the book. What is the book? The book is the same book that we all have on our shelves. The book is the same book that we all read every single day. But when it comes to the image, we say image doesn't matter. What does that have to do about salvation? Everything matters. Anything written in this Bible matters because what? It says, he that believeth on me. He that believes on me, as the scripture says. So anything that goes outside what the scripture says, we are not to believe in. We are to reject. Read. And send it unto the seven churches. And it says, and send it unto the seven churches. Now get verse 14. What does the black Messiah look like? Read. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Jesus Christ's head and his hairs were white like wool. But why is it that they teach salvation for all people? It doesn't matter what Jesus Christ looks like. But why would you distort the imagery of Christ, our Lord and Savior? Why not leave him the way he looks like? It says his head and his hairs were what? White like wool. Christ had white woolly hair. He did not have straight brown hair in the picture that they depict him to look like. No, that picture that we have today is a painting from Leonardo da Vinci as well as Michelangelo of Caesar Borgia, the son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. So when the Bible says the true Messiah had what? White woolly hair. What people on this earth have white woolly hair? I'm looking at the people right in this room. Look at the hair texture of everybody in this room. <coughs> woolly hair. Woolly hair is the hair texture of Negroes. Read. As white as snow. It was white as snow, but why don't we have this in our churches? Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, because why? Christ drank wine. They called him a wine bibber and a gluttoner. He drank wine, but he drank in moderation. Read. Verse 15. And his feet. And his feet. Read. Like unto fine brass. And his feet was like unto fine brass. What color is brass? It's a derivative of brown. What color is brass? A derivative of brown. Like unto fine brass. And guess what? If your feet is one color, it's going to be the same color as the rest of your body. Read on. As if. They burned in a furnace. As if they burn in a furnace. You burn anything in a furnace, what color does it turn? Black, black, black. Why? Because Christ was a so-called black man. But in the churches, they make him look like a Caucasian. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 now. Because it is important, the imagery of what the um, Lord and Savior looks like, because the Bible warns us. Anything that speak is spoken outside of the word of God to be warned, to beware, not to accept this doctrine. Because what comes with the doctrine is their democracy, the imagery of the ruling class. The ruling class has set up a system of Christianity to represent their agenda and their imagery, to reflect them. And we have become the servant class and they have become the ruling class. When we are supposed to be the ruling class. Now read that. 
The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. Read. But I fear, lest by any means as the serpent beguile Eve. But I fear, lest by any means as a serpent, meaning a wicked and treacherous man in the garden of Eden, beguiled Eve, meaning tricked Eve. Read. Through his subtlety. Through his lies, through his craftiness, his cunningness. Read. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So that your mind should not be corrupted by the simplicity that is in Christ. Because our minds has been corrupted. Anything that's spoken outside his Bible is corruption. It's philosophy. <laughs> it's lies. Read. Verse 4. For if he that cometh preach him another Jesus. Wait a minute. If he... That cometh and preacheth another Jesus. If there's another Jesus being spoken about, preached about, that's not written in this Bible, what are we supposed to do? Whom we have not preached. Because the, 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 the Christ of the Bible was a black man with woolly hair. But the Christ that they preach and the, the image behind Christianity is long, stringy hair. Long, stringy hair with what? Not melanated skin, no pigmentation. So that's strike one. If you come with a, a doctrine outside of what the image of Christ looks like, then no, 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 brother. We got to contend with you. Read. Or if ye receive another spirit. And another spirit, read. Which ye have not received. Read. Or another gospel. Or a what? Another gospel. This is another gospel. Christ was not a white man. Christ looked like us. Christ was a so-called black man. What is another gospel? Salvation is for all people. Because that was not Christ's gospel. That's the gospel of democracy. America's uh, um, a democracy. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. So now let's get to it. So Jesus Christ being a black man, and Paul warned us, if any man, bring, any man brings to you something outside his Bible, do what? Which ye have not accepted. Read. Ye might well bear with him. Me bear with them, me correct them according to the scriptures. Because Jesus Christ was a black man. What else did they distort out of the Holy Bible? Now, let's get me who did Christ come for? Because we think salvation is for all people. Let's get it out of the man himself, his mouth himself. Read. Matthew 1, verse 21. The book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. And who says he? Mary. Mary shall bring forth a son, read. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Jesus means what? Savior. Read. For he shall save his people. For Jesus shall save who? His people. So read it again from the top. And she shall bring forth a son. Mary shall bring forth a son, read. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall call his name Jesus, read. For he shall save his people. Did it say he'll save all people? His people. It says Jesus shall save who? His people. Wait a minute, but where do we get all people? We keep on saying salvation for all people. No, it says he shall save his people. Give me Matthew 2 verse 6. Who is Christ's people? We were from the beginning of the New Testament. But we jump to the book of Paul's saying there's neither Jew or Greek. Not understand what does Jew or Greek mean. We go to uh, Romans 1 verse 16 and says to the Jew first and to the Greek. Not understand who those Greeks were. Read. The book of Matthew chapter 2 verse 6. And thou Bethlehem. Because who is Christ's people? The Bible says, he shall save his people. Read. In the land of Judah. Uh-huh. Art not the least among the princes of Judah. Read. For out of thee. Out of Judah. Out of Bethlehem. Read. Shall come a governor. Shall come a governor. Because Christ is our governor. He's our Lord of Lords. He's our kings and kings. Read. That shall rule my people. That shall rule who? My people. My people who? Israel. Israel is Christ's people. The literal descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The descendants of David, King David, which was a literal Israelite. Not a spiritual Israelite. King Hezekiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. These are all literal Israelites by nationality, right. not spirituality. So it says that shall rule my people who? Israel. Did it say all people who? Israel. Israel. Now go back to Matthew 1 verse 21. Because we got to take the Bible within its cultural context. Read. Book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Read. For he shall save his people. We read in Matthew 2 verse 6 who is Christ's people. Read. From their sins. From whose sins? From their sins. From whose sins? From their sins. From their sins. Who was given the laws of God? No other nation was given the laws of God. No other covenant was established with any other nation. Neither was a new covenant established with any other nation. So how can salvation be for all nations? Now let's get you Matthew 15 verse 24. So let's see when Christ got older. Did things change? No, nothing changed. When Christ was born, God put an agenda in his mind. God sealed the instructions. You shall save my people, your people, the Israelites. Now, when Christ got older, did it change? Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. Read. But he answered and said, I am not sent. Christ answered 
and said, I am not sent but unto what? But unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ answered and says, I am not sent. But, but we understood that Christ, God sent Christ. But well, why is he now saying, I am not sent but unto who? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. He was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why? Because Israel's lost to the identity. They don't even know who they are. The Israelites don't even know that they stand in this room. They don't understand that they took on the curses of God. That we were separated from nationality. That the Greeks in the New Testament were the Israelites that was going on the Greek customs. They were Hellenistic Jews that spoke the language Greeks. Or they were citizens of Greece. Just like Paul was a citizen of Rome. But he called himself a Roman, but he was an Israelite. Now, read on. Read it again. I am, but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Give me Acts chapter 5 verse 29 now. Because we got to stay out of scriptures that we don't know of. We got to stick to the basics. If you have the foundational understanding, then we don't understand what the Bible is talking about. Read. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29. Read. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, Read. We ought to obey God rather than men. Read. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. The God Jesus. of who? The God of our fathers. Who's the our fathers? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob raised up Jesus. Read. Whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Who we slew, we gave up our Lord and Savior unto the Romans. Read. Verse 31, him have God exalted. Him have, who's the him? Jesus is the him. Read. With his right hand. He exalted him with his right hand, gave him strength and power. Read. To be a prince. Christ was exalted to be a prince. In Matthew 2 verse 6, we said that what? Out of thee, Bethlehem, shall thou rise up a prince and a governor. Read. And a savior. And a savior. Read. For to give repentance. To what? To give repentance. To who? To Israel. To Israel. A prince and a savior. To give repentance to Israel. Read. And forgiveness And of forgiveness of what? Sins. And sins. Our sins being forgiven is only given to Israel. Read. Down down three minutes. Read. And we are his witnesses uh -huh. of these things. So said that he, God, raised up Christ to give repentance, he re to be a savior, to give repentance for sin and forgiveness of sins only to Israel. Now, why do we need salvation? Why do we need salvation? Give me Luke 168. So we read that Christ only came and died for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He didn't come for anybody else. And he only was a savior to Israel, gave repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. Now, why is it that we need salvation? Because we say everybody needs salvation. From what? To be saved is to be saved from a, a, a detrimental situation. Why do we need to be saved? From the curses of God. Read Luke 168. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Wait, blessed be the Lord God of everybody. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Did it say everybody? Israel. The Chinese? Israel. The white man? Israel. The East Indian man? Israel. The Arab man? Israel. Israel by nationality, not spirituality. Read. For he, for he have visited and redeemed his people. He visited and redeemed his people. Read. And have raised up in horn of salvation for us in the house of his servants. Who's the name. us? The Israelites. Read. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, mm -hmm. which, have been, which have been since the world began, mm -hmm. that we should be saved. That the Israelites should be saved from what? From our enemies. Wait a minute. It says that the Israelites should be saved from our enemies. That's the whole purpose of salvation. Who's, that? Who's our enemies? Everybody's against the black man, the Hispanic man, the Native American Indian man. Why do you think slavery is um, happening to us? God is what Christ was brought on this earth to redeem us from the hand of our enemies. Read. And from the hand of all that hate us. Everybody hates the black man. That's why they're shooting us down the streets. That's why they're locking us up. That's why they lynch us. That's why they burn our houses. That's why they ra rape, rob us. Because why? Because we're hated by all nations. That's why Christ came on the scene. One minute. To save us. Read it again. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from what? Our enemies. That's the whole purpose of salvation. That we should be saved from our enemies. We have enemies all over the place. They come into our communities. They take our businesses. They what? They will um. They exploit us. Exploiters. They exploit us. They take our businesses. They um. Feed what? us crap. They feed us crap. Yeah. They shut our water off. That's why we need salvation. We need our own land. And to be saved, it doesn't you go to heaven. No. To be saved is to have your own land. To have your own government. Right. To have your own military. To have your own system, to have your own water, to have your own food, to provide for your own people, to have our own land, to be brought back to the land of Jerusalem, which is our homeland. 
America is not our homeland. America is not our rest. Now, like I said, ten seconds. we're going to leave it with that, and then we're going to allow the brothers to speak, and then we're going to go further to why we need salvation and who's salvation for. All right? Okay. Uh, Master Israel and those who are present, we appreciate your cooperation. <coughs> and at this time, we're going to give away to Brother uh, Reginald Young for his 15 minute comments. Thank you. <coughs> I want to welcome all of you. We thank God for this opportunity to come together to discuss his holy word. Very appreciative of the zeal that was shown because if you truly believe something, it ought to be something that you defend and stand on. In, Rome, in Revelation chapter 1, just want to, this, this really isn't uh, part of the discussion. We don't have any pictures of a white Jesus, blue eyed Jesus, <coughs> stringy haired Jesus, so that, that aspect really doesn't uh, apply to us. I just want to look at something in Revelation uh, chapter 1, uh, verse number 11, because all the scriptures that the brother gave. I agree with because it's the truth. It's just he didn't read far enough. Uh, you can make a verse mean something that it never meant if you don't look at the whole uh, context. So that that's what I'm gonna show you what may have been missed by the uh, <coughs> brother Israel that I wanna uh, share with him. Revelation chapter one, verse number 11 says what now, Revelation is what's called apocalyptic literature. So there are signs and, and symbols and figures and numerology that's not necessarily literal. So you can't just look at something and then say, well, because it says he had white hair, woolly, the only people that have woolly white hair is Negroes. Well, that, that's not even the, the writer's point because nobody was called a Negro when John was writing. We're talking about something that today, you can't take a mindset today and try to throw it back into the Bible. You have to let the Bible tell us what it's saying to the people at that time. So just read verse number 11 and I'll, I'll deal with, with Matthew. Revelations chapter 1 and verse number 11. Mm -hmm. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, mm -hmm. the first and the last. Yeah. And thou seest right in the book. What you see right in the book. And send it unto the seven churches mm -hmm. which are in Asia, unto Ether, Ephesus, Ephesus, Ephesus and unto and Samaria, Samaria, and unto... Just go to verse 12 then. We ain't got to read that because he already read that. Go and ahead. I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Uh -huh. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Okay. And now, 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 here's the question. Is that literal? <coughs> Did he actually see seven golden candlesticks? Keep reading. But okay. that's not even the point. All right, Revelation chapter 1, verse 13. Uh -huh. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, yeah. one like... Now, now, remember, this is a revelation, so this is a vision. What does he see? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man... Go ahead. ...clothed with a garment down... To the foot uh -huh. and girded upon the pots Gird, and girded about the paps of the golden girl. There go we go. His head and his hair were white like wool. Now notice the brother said his hair was white and woolly. <coughs> he said head and hairs white like wool. Didn't say it was woolly. We're talking about the color. Look at the language. Read it again. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white now, as now, snow. Now, the brother right there got white hair. Is that wool? Sitting right there, white hair. White like wool. So, th this is an issue in English. We're not talking about woolly hair. We're talking about color. White like wool. But that, that's not even a... That really has nothing to do with... Uh, salvation because nobody here from the Church of Christ is trying to promote 
Jesus was a white man with blue eyes and stringy hair. We already know that the people from that region, from Shem, Ham, and Japheth, we know that he was from Judah and that he was a man of color. That, that's not an argument. That, that's not even an issue. So he read Matthew 1.21 that said, which is true. Matthew says that his name would be called Jesus. He would deliver his people from their sins. But the Bible goes further than just dealing with Israel. And this is what I would hope that we would begin to get into. Let's look at the, the parallel text in Luke. Luke chapter 2. Because Luke gives the same information as Matthew and Mark. And let's look at Luke chapter 2. We just need to read a little further. Luke chapter 2, and let's start at verse number 30. The book of Luke chapter 2, verse number Now this is Simeon, after the announcement was made and Jesus was born. Luke chapter 2, verse 30 through 32 says what? Uh-huh, and it says, mm -hmm. And the angel said unto her, mm -hmm. Fear not. No, no, Luke chapter 2, verse oh, there 30. There we go, there we go. For yeah. mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Yeah. Which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Now, <coughs> what I would like explained is, who is the all people? He says, my eyes have seen salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For and thy light. eyes have seen salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light <coughs> to lighten the Gentiles. Now, now, who's that? Because it says Gentiles. Who's that? A light to to lighten who? The Gentiles and, and the glory of thy people Israel. So that's Israel and then we got the Gentiles. Now, wh what are we going to do with that? I I'm not promoting salvation is for all nations because that's something I want to say. I'm going to say what the Bible says. Go to go back to Isaiah chapter 2. <laughs> because it might... The, the, the argument really isn't with me. The argument is with, the, with what the scriptures say. Isaiah chapter 2, verse number 1. Let's see if we can get all nations. Isaiah chapter 2. The, the, the Bible, see, you never start reading from the end of a book. Nobody picks up a book and starts reading at the end or in the middle. You always start at the beginning. But if we can't start at the beginning, we're going to get confused at the end. That's why we may be having an issue with what does Greek mean and what does Gentile mean. Because we, we're not starting where we need to start. Isaiah chapter 2 verse number 1 says what? Isaiah chapter 2 verse number 1. <coughs> the word that Isaiah the son, the son of Amos saw Amos concerning, come on. Sir Judah and Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass in the last days yeah. that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the mountain. In the top and, of the mountain. In the top of the mountain and shall be exalted above the hills uh -huh. and all nations. No, no, just black people. And all nations. Just white people. And all nations shall flow unto it. No, I didn't say that, did I? All nations. I didn't say that. Isaiah said all Nations shall flow unto it. Keep reading. Verse 3. Yeah. And many people shall go and say, uh -huh. Come ye, uh -huh. let us go unto the mountain of the Lord, uh -huh. to the house of God of Jacob. But notice, all nations are going to flow unto it. All nations. Right? Let us go up to the house of the Lord, to the mountain of Jacob. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. He will teach us his ways. We'll of walk Jacob. in his path. For out of us. Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So I didn't say all nations. The Bible says, the prophet says all nations. So now when we get to these scriptures in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you're reading on the front end without taking into consideration who the all nations are. So when he read in Acts chapter 5, when he talked about, which is true, Israel, if you remember, there are more chapters in the book of Acts than five chapters. So let's go over to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. And let, let, let's see if we can get a Gentile over there, <coughs> Who, whoever they think that is. Acts chapter 10. Uh, let's start down there around... Let's get around verse number 10. Acts chapter 10 and verse number 10. Uh-huh. And he became very hungry uh -huh. and would have eaten, 
But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Yeah. And saw heaven opened up, mm -hmm. and a certain vessel descending unto him. Yep. As it had been a great sheep <coughs> knit at the four corners <coughs> and let down to the earth. Now, now go up to verse number one, because I want to know is he is he an Israelite? Verse number one, chapter ten, Acts. Yeah, verse number one. There was a certain man in Caesarea. A centurion, a centurion of a band a, called the Italian band. Uh huh. Okay, is, is he an Israelite? Nah, negative. He what, was what, what, no, just read what it says. You ain't got to answer. I, I want him to answer because we, we just sharing information. This man, Cornelius, is a centurion of the Italian band called the Italian band. Yes. Right? It don't say he was an Israelite, <laughs> yet Peter, who was one of Jesus' 12 apostles, went down to his house. He had a vision, and he preached unto him. The, now watch verse number 28. Now watch this. Because when Peter got there, they stood to, to fell down to worship Peter, but Peter told him to get up. I'm just a man. Watch verse 27. Acts chapter 10 and verse 27. Uh -huh. And as he talked with him, mm -hmm. he went in and found many that were come together. What did he say? And he said unto them, uh -huh. He that know, he know how that it is an, an unlawful thing yeah. for a man that is a Jew. Hold it. It's to, an unlawful thing for what? For a man that is a Jew. Okay. To do what? To keep company or unto one of another come, nation. Or come unto one. Or come come on unto one of another <laughs> nation. Right. Right? Another well, nation. So another nation would be other than Israel. Other than Israel. Come on. But God. But who? But God. See, this ain't me talking. But who? But God. Now, this is Peter talking, right? Mm -hmm. Peter said, God showed me something. God has showed me that I should not call any man common. Wait, I shouldn't call what? Any man Black common. Black man. Any man. White man. Any man. Green man. Any man common. Yellow man. Any man common. Uh-huh. Or unclean. Drop down to verse 34. Verse 34. Uh-huh. Acts. Chapter 10 and verse 34. Yep. Then, yeah. Pe then, on, Peter, go ahead, go ahead. then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. God is what? God is no respecter of persons. But what? But in every nation, he that heareth him. But in what nation? But in every nation. Go ahead. But in every nation, he that heareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Now, we, we know what happened. The Holy Spirit fell on the Gentiles. They spoke in tongues. Look at verse number 45. Uh-oh. Verse 45. Uh-huh. Acts chapter... Hold up. Go up to 43. Acts chapter 10 and verse 43. Yeah. To him give all the <coughs> prophets witness... That what? That through his name... Whosoever believes. Listen, listen. All the prophets say, Whosoever believeth in him, talking about Jesus, shall receive remission of sins. Shall receive remissions of sins. What happened while Peter was speaking? Mm. Acts chapter 10, verse 44. While Peter was speaking these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them. All of them which heard the word. Now, who is it that heard the word? All the Gentiles. Them. Go ahead. Verse 45. Uh -huh. And they, the circumcision. Who's the circumcision? Which That's Jews. Israel. That's the Jews. They of the circumcision which believed, believed were, were what? Astonished. Why? As many as came with Peter. Why were because, they astonished? Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm only on saying Gentiles. what... Peter said, <coughs> the Gentiles also received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, verse number 11. I mean, chapter 11, verse 1. Chapter 11, verse 1. This is Acts. How much time I got? You got five. Okay. This is Acts chapter 11, and verse and 1. I, I don't need 15 minutes. And they, the apostles. not really say nothing. And the apostles and brethren uh -huh. that were in Judea. The apostles and who else? Brethren. Yeah. That were in Judea. Uh -huh. Heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. Uh -huh. And when Peter was come unto Jerusalem. So, so the Gentiles 
the Holy Spirit fell on them, they were saved. Now, Peter is going to rehearse the matter from the beginning. Look at verse number three. Verse number three. Now, start at verse two. Get verse number two again. Yeah. All right, this Go is ahead. Acts chapter 11, verse So we can two. see what happened. Go ahead. And when Peter was come unto Jerusalem, uh -huh. they that were of the circumcision. They, they that were of the what? Circumcision. Now, who's the circumcision? You. That's Israel, Israel, right? Israel, Israel. They that were the circumcision contended with, with him, saying what? Saying thou wantest in. Now, when, it's, when it's into men. Into men uncircumcised. Now, wait, who's uncircumcised? That's the Gentiles. heathen. That's the other nation. Hmm. You mean to tell me, Peter, you went into oh, uncircumcised yes, men? Yes, he did. And Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning. And what, what was the conclusion? Saying thou wentest into uncircumcised men and didst. He, and, and matter of fact, him. not only did he go, he ate with them. He ate with them. Now, drop down four. to verse 15. Verse 15. How much time I got? You got, you got four minutes. All right. Acts chapter. I'm gonna just finish this. Eleven and be done, fifteen. It sounds like he's not keeping time. And it says, I am. and as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them. Now who's the them? <laughs> the uncircumcised, Gentiles. the Gentiles, uh -huh. right? Go and ahead. As I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them mm -hmm. as on us, us at, the beginning. at the beginning. So he said, I remember the word of the Lord, John baptized with water. You'll be baptized with the Holy Ghost. But watch what they say at verse number 18. Verse number 18. Yeah. Acts chapter 11 at verse number 18. Uh -huh. When they heard these things, yeah. they held their peace and, did what? and glorified God. Saying what? Saying, then thou God also. Then have God also. <laughs> and then also. Also, See, we already know it's to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Then, then have God, God also to the Gentiles done what? Granted repentance unto life. All right. I, I mean, I'm. Hey, the prophet said it. Uh, Peter said it. So he he, he got to. I would like the brother to deal with these verses to show that all nations don't mean all nations, and Gentiles uncircumcised <coughs> don't mean that. <coughs> I will give way to Brother Israel for his second 15 minute remark. Thank you. All right, let's go, Jess. Oh, you're going to start right there? Go back to Luke 168, verse 71, real quick. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Verse 71, and get the genre of conflict Bible dictionary. Verse 71. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. Read. And from the hand of all that hate. Mm, why do we need to? Who's our enemies? And why do we need to be saved? Because if we don't understand who we are as a people, we will never see ourselves in the scriptures and think that we are, in actuality, are the Gentiles. What? You are the Gentiles. That's the thing. You don't know that. The reason you don't know who you are because you're in a Gentile state of mind. Because you've been distanced and you've been relinquished from your nationality. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy 28. That we shall be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all of them that hate us. Then we'll get into Acts chapter 10. Deuteronomy 28, 28 verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. But it shall come to pass. But it shall come to pass. Now why do we need salvation? Why do we need to be saved from our enemies? This is the reason why. Read. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So Moses is speaking to the Israelites. It shall come to pass. Meaning a future prophecy, a future event will occur, will come upon the Israelites. If we don't listen to God's voice, read. To observe, to do all his commandments. If the Israelites never kept God's commandments, what will happen? And his statutes, which I command thee this day. And his statutes, what God command us this day, read. That all these curses. That all these what? Curses. All these what? Curses. All these curses shall come what? Come upon thee. Shall come upon the Israelites, read. And overtake thee. And overtake us as a people. So the curses of God will be placed upon the children of Israel. So that's why it says, has spoken by the hand of the prophets from the beginning, that we shall be saved from our enemies. Give me verse 48. The reason why we need salvation, because the ruling class, which is our enemies, are, 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 are afflicting us. Read. Verse 48. Therefore, Shall thou serve thine enemies? Therefore, shall thy serve thy enemies. Read. Which the Lord shall send against Which thee. God sent our enemies against us. God sent the British against us. God sent the Dutch against us. God sent America against us. God sent the Spaniards as well as the Portuguese against us. Read. In hunger. In hunger, we have to serve our enemies. You don't see us owning any major food produce, any shop rights, any farms. 
So we have to serve our enemies in hunger. We serve the enemies in slavery for hunger as well as now. Read. And in thirst. And water. For in thirst. You want water? You got to go to what? Your enemies. You The water that we have in this room. Aquafina. You have Dasani. You have Polo Spring. We don't own it. We got to go to our enemies. And in actuality in Flint, Michigan, if you don't pay your water bill, what happens? They shut up the water. We don't have clean water. We got to go to the other nations for our water. Read. And in nakedness. And clothing. We don't own any raw textile company to clothe us. You don't say made in black America. No. We got to go to our enemies. Read. And in want of all things. What do you want to learn about religion? You want to learn to understand about Jesus Christ? Who do you think gave us religion? Who do you think gave us Christianity? It wasn't you, my brother. No, it was our ruling oppressors. They gave it to us in slavery. And what we learn from them is what we still practice to this very day. So that's why we need salvation from our enemies. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And what happened historically? Prophetically, Moses says, if we don't keep God's laws, not only are you going to have to serve your enemies, not only for food, water, clothing, and anything, you want to learn about Jesus? You got to go to the other nations. You're the white man. You want to learn education? You got to go to the other nations. You want a driver's license? Anything you want in this world, you got to go to your enemies. And the enemy shall do what? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Wait a minute. Prophetically speaking and historically speaking, what people on this earth had yokes of iron put upon their neck? What's not our people? Did this not happen during the 16 Atlantic transatlantic slave trade? Did not your forefathers, as well as your foremothers, have ch shackles and chains upon them? Yes, they did. Read the history book. The Bible's a prophetic book. A prophetic book concerning the blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. When Christ talks about salvation, we need salvation from the curses of God. And this is the enemies God's talking about. But the other nations need salvation. How does a people that enslave your people need salvation? How does a person that puts somebody in slavery need salvation right. when they have you in slavery? Does that make sense? That's common sense. But the black man has lost all type of sense. We don't even have common sense. Now go to verse 68. Verse, Who else did this to us? Read. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Read one, one. And the God shall bring us to Egypt. Wait a minute. We just exit out of Egypt. But God says, I'm going to bring you into a new Egypt. A spiritual Egypt. Read. Verse 20. Exodus 20 verse 2. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Because God brought us out of the land of Egypt for, for the hands of Moses. Read. Out of the house of bondage. What does Egypt mean? The house of bondage. The house of slavery. Read. Verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. House of bondage again. Because why? And under Egypt, under Pharaoh, we served slavery for about 400 years. Hmm. Let's do a comparison analysis. How long did blacks serve slavery under America? approximately about 400 years. Right. I'm not saying the 400 years prophecy, but I'm showing the correlation between the two Egypts. America and ancient Egypt, it's the same people serving slavery, but we don't need but salvation for every people. What? Where's the black man's government? Where's the black man's army? Where's the black man's raw textile company? Where's the black man's farm? But all nations need salvation. But I see a Chinese superpower. I see a Chinese military. I see the Russian military. I see the East Indian military. I see everybody's military but blacks, but they need salvation. How do they need salvation when they're ruling class? It makes no sense. The Bible's a common sense book, but you guys took this book and made it a book of mythology. Now, go back. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Slavery again, this time with what? Not with minutes. ships. With what? Ships. With what? Ships. What nation on this earth went into slavery with ships? Go to the history books. Go to the records. You cannot find one nation outside of blacks. The 1619 translated slave trade. Well, Christopher Columbus, during the conquest to the Americas, we brought 1,100 in Indian slaves back to serve our Spain. Well, Chicago slave ships. That happened to blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Read that part again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With ships. Cargo slave ships. The transatlantic slave trade. That's our history. Read. By the way, the whereof I spake unto thee. By the way, I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Thou, thou shalt see it no more again. We shall not see our homeland, Jerusalem, again. Why do we need salvation? Because we seek a land. We seek a place. We are nothing but strangers in the land of America. Salvation is to be saved and put us back in our homeland. You, but you think 
God slams for everybody. Oh, no, no, you've been mistaken. Read. And then you shall be sold unto your enemies. And in America, we shall be sold unto a what? Our en unto your enemies. But our friends, a salvation for everybody. But we shall be sold unto our enemies. Our enemies. We're in the hands of our enemies. The white men, so we got sold into slavery by God. God sold us because what? We broke his laws. And he used the white man. And there in America, we shall be sold unto what? Your enemies. Our enemies. Read. For bondmen. For slave men. And bond women. Slave women. Go to verse 37 now. So now we understood who the enemies that we need to be saved from. Now verse 37. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. And we will become astonishment in the land of our captivities. Read. A proverb. A proverb. And a byword. Meaning we will be called outside of our God-given names. African America. That's a Gentile name. Or West Indian. That's a Gentile name. Haitian. Jamaican. That's how. Who gave you that name, black man? Was it not your slave master? You don't even know who you are. You don't even know your rich history. You don't even know you're the rich, the people of this Bible. We shall be so, we were given out God names outside of our God-given name. That's what we were called Gentiles. You are the Gentiles that the Bible speak of. Now give me the genre of compact Bible dictionary. Because we don't read. We don't understand the basics, but we go to Cornelius. Stay out of Cornelius. You don't understand the history of Cornelius. You don't have to read all that. You talk about Gentiles, heathens. Not knowing that's talking about Israelites. They went to these customs, the Gentile customs. Why? Because the ruling class, we assimilated into the culture of the Greeks. We assimilated into the culture of Romans. Just like you black men today, you assimilate to American society. What do you call yourself? You call yourself, I'm an American citizen. And God, we trust. God bless America. It's the same people that back then you call yourself Greeks. Same people today that call yourself Americans. But you don't even know that. Read that. Gentiles. Six minutes. Gentiles. Usually it means a non-Israelite people. Wait, Gentiles usually what? Usually, usually means sometimes, not all the times. It means what? A non-Israelite people. It's supposed to mean a non-Israelite people, but there's a stipulation. Read. Under conditions of peace, considerate treatment was accorded Gentiles by the Israelites. So that's it. So it says usually. Usually means what? Sometimes. It means an Israelite people. Now, Let's go to, he says, salvation for all people. Let's get real quick. Romans chapter 2, um, 11 verse 27. Salvation for all people. Then we're going to go to Cornelius real quick. The book of Romans, chapter 11. This to all people, all nations he's talking about. Read that. Verse 27. Read. For this is my covenant <laughs> unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Mm -hmm. As concerning the gospel. I shall take away what? Their sins. This is the covenant unto them that I should take away their sins. Whom? What do we read in Matthew 121? Hmm. He shall save a savior, raise up a savior to save his people from their sins. Who's his people? Christ. And we're going to read it over. Read. For this Amen. is my covenant unto them when I should take away their sins. Mm -hmm. As concerning the gospel, mm -hmm. there are enemies for your sakes. Read verse 26. I want it. Verse 26. Verse 26. And so all Israel. So all what? Israel. All Israel. All nations. All Israel. Read. Shall be saved. All Israel shall be saved. Give me Romans 10 verse 1. The book of Romans. Chapter 10 verse 1. Wait. Isn't Romans, Romans chapter 11 talking about the Gentiles being grafted in? But why does Romans 11 27 says all Israel shall be saved? You're missing a point. Because Israel was called Gentiles. Read. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel. Is that they might be saved. Wait a minute. Paul said the same thing, but we're in the book of Romans. I thought he was writing to the Romans. Because the Romans were in, in, the Israelites were in Rome. That Israel shall be what? Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. That Israel, give me Acts 26 verse 6 now. That Israel might be saved. Read. The book of Acts chapter 26 verse 6. Read. And now I stand. I am judged for the hope of the promise made Made of God unto our Father. Wait a minute, this is Acts 26. But we passed all the Gentile scriptures. We passed Acts chapter 10 with Cornelius. But this is Paul in the last chapter before he was put to death by Nero. Read. Until which promise our 12 tribes. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my gosh. Read it again. Read it again, brother. Read it again. Verse 6. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise. Why was Paul judged? Because I thought Paul was a minister to the Gentiles, was he not? But why does he say, I am judged for the hope and a promise read? Made of God unto our fathers. Wait, made of God to whose fathers? Our fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our fathers read. Unto which promise? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Not all nations came out of Abraham. You're forgetting that. 
Not all nations came out of Abraham. Only Ishmael came out of Abraham. Midian came out of Abraham. Isaac came out of Abraham. Right. But the promise went to Isaac. Isaac had Jacob and Esau. The promise didn't go to Esau, but Repent. the promise went to Jacob. Read. Until which promise? Our 12 tribes. Until which promise? Our what? 12 tribes. Our 12 tribes. Instantly serving God. The promise is only to the 12 tribes. Now let's handle Cornelius real quick. One, two scriptures. Acts 10 verse 31. You forgot to read verse 36. You read verse 35, but you forgot verse 36, my brother. Verse 31 now. The book of Acts chapter 10, verse 31. Read. And said Cornelius, thy prayer is heard. So the subject matter is Cornelius, right? Read. And thy arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. So the subject matter is summing up. Verse 1, Come all the way to the end minutes. of the chapter. Now go to verse 35. Let's clarify what the brother read. So the subject matter is Cornelius. Let's see, was he a, a, a person from another nation? Or was he an Israelite? Read. Verse 35. Uh -huh. But in every nation. But in every nation. All nations, right? He that feared him. See, it can be anybody that fears God. Read. And work of righteousness. And work of righteousness. Read. Is accepted with him. Every nation. Whosoever. Read. Verse 36. Verse 36. You forgot to read the next verse, brother. Keep things within its cultural context. Who's he talking about? Read. The word which God said. Wait, what the word which who said? God said. Concerning who? Cornelius. That's all the conversation is about. Cornelius. The word which God said to who? One minute. Unto the children of Israel. Brother, what are you talking about? You really, why do you stop at verse 35 and I read verse 36? Unto the word God, which God sent unto who? The children of Israel. Because Cornelius was an Israelite. Verse 28 now. Because you said one of another nation. Not knowing that there's a split between the kingdoms. There's northern kingdom and southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was called Gentiles because they went to Gentile customs. Read verse 28. Acts chapter 10 verse 28. We don't got a lot of time. Let's go to the point. Z Ezekiel 37 verse 22. Get to the prophecy. Let's get to the point. Mm -hmm. That's all we need. Read. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 22. Read. Therefore, therefore, say unto the house of Israel. Read. Thus saith the Lord God. Read. 37, 37 22. 22. Read. Come on. And I will make them one nation in the, in the land upon the mountains Wait, of Israel. Wait, this I will make them what? And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. That's why it says not to come to another one of another nation. Because you forgot to split during the t time period of King Solomon. He had to bring them back into one nation because there was a separation and a dividing of the southern kingdom and northern kingdom. Northern kingdom was called Gentiles. The northern kingdom was also be called uncircumcised. The southern kingdom was called the Jews. The southern kingdom was called circumcised. Read. And one king shall be king to them all. And one king, which is Christ, shall be king to all twelve tribes. Read. And they shall be no more two nations. Wait, they shall be no, no more two nations. That's why Paul, that's why Cornelius says it is what it was. It is not is unlawful to come one to one which is of, of another nation. One of another nation because there was two nations. Read. Neither shall they be divided the scripture read? into two kingdoms anymore. Neither at shall all. be what divided to what? Two kingdoms anymore at all. That's why it says one of another nation because who was divided to two kingdoms, brother? All right, show. Okay, we. Uh, thank you all for your cooperation so far. Next <coughs> time we get away to Brother Reggie for his last 15 minutes. As a wish, there will be a 15, two 15 minute question and answer sessions. Brother Reggie. Thank you, Brother, once again for uh, this exposition. Uh, the one thing I want to highlight since this is going on tape is that in having a, a Bible discussion, the Bible interprets itself. So the Bible tells us who the Gentiles are. <coughs> so reading the dictionary that says supposed, usually of another nation, my, my question is, does that dictionary trump this? If that dictionary <coughs> don't, don't trump this, then why can't we just go in this book and understand who a Gentile is? That's the first thing. The second thing is without, uh, he, you notice when he read Deuteronomy 28, let's go over there. When he read Deuteronomy 28, he threw in there, and I'm not saying he did it on the slide because you heard him, he threw in there <laughs> spiritual Egypt. That, that was the, but that wasn't in the Bible. But that's what he threw in there, spiritual Egypt. Then he tried to parallel the slave trade of blacks being brought to America, yet the people that Moses was writing to in Deuteronomy 28, they ain't know nothing about that. So... This this was something. Read 28 1. Because he started talking about the British, the Dutch, the Spanish, the Portuguese. Nothing in Deuteronomy 28 says anything about the British, Dutch, Spanish, 
Portuguese, and none of y'all today are in slavery. Now, I don't know, I mean, if y'all in slavery to the, to the white man, how'd y'all get here on your own? You got your own cars, you work. Tell me how you're in slavery to the white man. You, you work, you have families, you raise children. You're not being whipped and called you can't run away and you can't advance yourself or you can't get education. What you're doing is you're throwing a 21st century <laughs> mindset back into the Bible trying to make an application. Here's the thing. When Israel was in slavery in Egypt, were they in slavery in Egypt under white people or black people? That's what I want to know. Who are they in slavery to? Whites or black? So when he says you're going to go back again to Egypt, is that white people or black people? Let's read 28.1. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse number 1. And it shall be when the Lord said unto thee, It shall come to pass mm -hmm. if thou hearken, if thou shalt hearken <laughs> diligently unto the voice of thy Lord, uh -huh. thy God, uh -huh. to observe and to do all his commandments, uh -huh. which I command thee this day, mm -hmm. that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now, which one of y'all did it? <clears throat> which one of y'all did it? Because nobody could keep the law. The only one that kept the law perfectly was Jesus. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So I don't even got to get into Deuteronomy 20 acres. He trying to make that fit America, and it was talking to Israel going, so I, I don't know where that interpretation came from, because y'all not in slavery. That's why you were able to come here on your free will. You guys are able to go and minister on your free will. You have freedoms. That's why you in America. Then you said, who gave us the religion? Uh, oppressors, or the white man is our oppressor. Well, the oppressor is the devil. That, that's the adversary. That's our our enemy. That's who the enemy is. That's our common enemy is the devil. You say, who gave us our religion? Let's go to Galatians chapter 1. Because unless you're going to call Paul an oppressor, because I, 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 what I got, we stay in line with what Paul said. He said at Galatians chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse number 11. Galatians chapter 1 and verse mm -hmm. number 11. Uh-huh. But I certify you, brethren, uh -huh. that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Mm -hmm. now, 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 is there any recorded case of Paul preaching Jesus was a Negro? Mm. See, we, we, we got to use the Bible right. Just, mm. we, we share it. Just use the Bible right. The gospel which I preached of me is not after man. Uh -huh. Go ahead. For I neither received it of man, neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, uh -huh. but by the revelations of Jesus Christ. Now, the gospel that I preach, I'm preaching the same gospel that Paul preached. So are we saying Paul is the oppressor? Because that's who you said we got our religion from. Paul said he got it from Jesus. So if Paul's the oppressor, now you got to say Jesus <laughs> is the oppressor because we're preaching the gospel that Paul preached that he said he got from Jesus, that Jesus died that he was buried, and that he rose again Jesus the third day. Now, let me go with Acts 26. Ten minutes. Acts 26, because he read verse 6 and 7, but he ain't read far enough. And then I'll go back to, to Cornelius. I only had to argue that point because it already said he went among those uncircumcised. And since this is on tape, y'all notice, he didn't deal with that. But maybe that's something we need to deal with. Who are the uncircumcised people? Are they Jews or are they people from another nation? Because <laughs> I want to know how you can be a Jew and not be circumcised. That's what I want to know. So he read Acts 26, 6 and 7. Let's drop down to verse 17. Because Paul wasn't... Let's see what Paul said when he began to talk. When he went before the council here. Acts chapter 26. When he went before Agrippa. Now, now watch this. Verse 17 says what? Uh -huh. Acts chapter 26 and verse Because 17. Because he's rehearsing what Jesus said to him. Mm -hmm. Now watch what Jesus said to him. Delivering thee. Go up one verse, 16. Uh -huh. 16. Yeah. But rise mm -hmm. and stand upon thy feet. Mm -hmm. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. What's the purpose? To make thee a minister <laughs> uh -huh. and a witness both to these <laughs> things which thou hast seen. Uh-huh. And for those things in which I will appear unto thee. So, so he said, I, I appeared to you, Paul. You remember in Damascus, Paul saw the Lord, 
So he said, I'm going to show you. I'm going to make you a minister, and you're going to be a witness. Verse 17. <laughs> verse 17. Uh -huh. Acts chapter 26 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Delivering thee from the people uh -huh. and from the Gentiles uh -huh. unto whom now I send thee. So the people he's delivered from, Jesus said, I'm sending you to. To so whom To now? do what? I send thee. Verse 18. Uh-huh. To open their eyes uh -huh. and to turn them from darkness uh -huh. to light mm -hmm. and from the power of Satan uh -huh. unto God. Yep. That they might receive forgiveness for sin uh -huh. and inheritance among them which Amen. are sanctified by the faith that is in me. So when I say salvation, I'm talking about forgiveness of sins. Just like Jesus talked about to Paul, and just like Paul preached, and they didn't discriminate. Now, <coughs> it went over to Romans chapter 11, and so uh, all Israel will be saved. This is just not, we got to speak within context. That, that's what we got to speak in. We got to speak within a context and not take a verse and pull the verse out of what's being said. Now, you notice he, he kind of quoted it. But he really didn't deal with it when he talked about the Gentiles being grafted in. Well, here's the question. If you're grafted in, then that would mean you wasn't in. But I don't know, maybe, he, he, you know, because look at verse 25. Just read verse 25. Watch what he says. Okay, this is Romans chapter 11 and verse 25. Uh -huh. Now, wait, drop, go up to verse 13 first. Not 11, go up to 11. Romans go up to 11. chapter 11 and... Because no, nobody's denying that it was to Israel first, just so, so that this is on tape. Nobody's denying Israel will be saved. Yes. What we're saying is, before God made the world, his plan was to bring Jew and Gentile into one body. So we're not disputing Israel was given it first. Verse number... Uh, 11. Yeah. Chapter 11 in Romans at verse 11. Yeah. I say then, uh -huh. have they stumbled uh -huh. that they should fall? Uh -huh. God forbid. Uh-huh. But rather go there <laughs> through their fall, through their fall, salvation come unto the Gentiles to do what? To provoke them to jealousy. Now, who's this salvation come to? If 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 this is just Jew or Israel, this don't make sense unless you're saying that Israel fell so that Israel could come in, so that Israel could be jealous of Israel. That that don't even make sense. Verse number, keep reading. All right, verse twelve, chapter eleven. Yeah. Of Romans. How much time I got? You got five. Okay, come on, come on, come now, on. Now, the fall of uh -huh. them, if the fall of them be the riches of, of the, the world, world go and ahead. the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, uh -huh. how much more their fullness? So, so, who are you speaking to? Come on, keep reading. Uh -huh. five, For three. I speak to the Gentiles, uh -huh. and, and as much as I, as I, the apostle of, I the am Gentiles. the apostle of the, the Gentiles. Gentiles. Now, is he saying I'm the apostle of the Jews or the apostles of the Gentiles? I mean, he, he said the Gentiles. I mean, unless we're saying this is a bad translation. I, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Verse number 25, before you read verse 26. Verse 25. Why well, would not, brethren, uh -huh. that you should be ignorant uh -huh. of this mystery? What's the mystery? That maybe, maybe, that maybe it's still a mystery. I don't know. Five minutes. Come on. Lest you should be wise in your own conceits. Okay. That blindness in part... It's happened to Israel. Yeah, until when? Until the fullness of the Gentiles has come. The, the, what does that say? Until what? Until the fullness, fullness of the Gentiles, Gentiles be come in. Who, well, who is that? Who is that? <laughs> who are these Gentiles that, that Paul is saying, I'm the apostle to the Gentiles. The Gentiles could come in. But, but let me get this, because he, he went to Ezekiel 37. That, that's just talking about the Valley of Dry Bones. That's no big deal, because the, the kingdoms were divided. So that, that's no big deal. This is where we need to start. Genesis chapter 12. Mm -hmm. Abraham wasn't a Jew. So let's see what God said to Abraham. And then everything else in the Bible falls in line with this. You can't make Scripture contradict Scripture. And if it seems to be a contradiction, that means we're understanding it incorrectly. Four minutes. Genesis chapter 12, verse number 2. This is talking to Abraham. Genesis chapter 12, verse number 2. Yeah. And I will make thee a great nation. Uh -huh. And I will bless thee and make thy name great, uh -huh. and thou shalt be a blessing. Yep. Verse 3, and I will bless them uh -huh. that bless thee, uh -huh. and I will curse him that curses thee, uh -huh. and in thy 
And in thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now who, I want to know then, who are these all families that the Bible <coughs> speaks of that would be blessed because of Abraham? Coming down in three minutes. Okay, go over to Galatians chapter 3 and I'll be done. Because Paul picks up on his theme. Unless Paul lied, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's being said here. Brother, Galatians chapter 3. You got Galatians chapter 3? Three? three minutes. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. The Christ hath redeemed us mm -hmm. from the curse of the law. Yeah. Being made a curse for us. Uh-huh. For it is written, Uh-huh. Curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Yep. That's right. <laughs> verse 14. Yeah. Go that ahead. the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles uh -huh. through Jesus Christ, uh -huh. that we might receive the promise of the Spirit in faith. So who's the blessing of Abraham coming on? That the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles uh -huh. through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that we now, might now, receive... Now go to Galatians 2.15 so we can see if he tried to say Gentile meant Jew. Galatians chapter 2 at verse 15. Uh-huh. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. All right, I'm done. I mean, I, I think the case was made that <coughs> Paul yeah, is the Paul minister to the Gentiles. And when I talk about uh, being saved, I'm talking about being saved from sin by Jesus Christ. I want to thank everyone for the Spirit of Corporation doing these two 15-minute uh, period dialogues. Now at this time, we're going to have the same time frame, 15-minute question and answer session, uh, as we uh, begin from the first uh, speaker. We're going to give way to Brother uh, Israel for your first question to Brother Reggie. You want to come forward, please? And I'll be the I'll <coughs> moderate the question. Actually, we can just sit. I mean, unless you just want to go up there, something yeah, right. Okay. Discussion. Well, I, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll watch the time frame. Yeah. Oh, and uh, just keep in mind now, uh, to you both. And, and we, we can just combine it. We don't need half hour. Okay then. All right. Okay. Because I mean, we got started late, and I know you said you had something. To yeah. Do. Uh huh. All okay. right. So, what's your questions? Well, I mean, we can. I guess we can question each other. Well, I just want to ask, how you say? How did you get saved? How we say, I'm not saying that. The scripture said, we just read Luke 161. We're still in the land of our enemies. So it says, read that again. Uh, you're not saved? We're not saved yet. The kingdom of heaven is not set up yet. Let, 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 let me that, clarify something. That's why I wanted to avoid. Yeah. Let, let, let me clarify something. Just let him answer. Yeah. Yeah, we don't Luke wanna... 161. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed <laughs> his people. And have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Mm -hmm. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Which have been since the world began. That we shall be saved from our enemies. When the Bible mentions salvation, it mentions being saved from our enemies. Are we still in the land of our capt captors? Were we not brought to America for slavery? So how are we saved? How are we saved when we're still in the same predicament? How are we saved when black people make up the um, vast majority of the prison institutions? How we say when we get shot down by the police? And that's why the, we, when we talk about the concept of salvation, we're not understanding, yes, Christ came on the cross, died right. for our sins, that we may give repentance. Because it's going to come a time period that, it's going to come a time period that we're going to be sealed and we're going to be brought out of this land. Give me Hebrews chapter 11. So we can't be saved being in, in, enslaved. We're still in the land of our captors. Hebrews 11 verse 14. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. We seek a country. That's what being salvation is. Have your own country. Have your own government. Have your own military. Have your own supply system to provide your people. We talk about black businesses. Mm -hmm. That's what we had in Israel. But since we were cast out into the countries of other nations, we can't, we're not saved. We're still slaves. One more scripture. Give me Deuteronomy 30. So salvation is being placed in our own land, being the ruling class, because right now we're the servant class. It's not supposed to be that. Under King David and King Solomon, we were the ruling class. We ruled all nations righteous with righteousness. We taught the laws of God. It's supposed to be that way right now, but because we broke God's laws, we were cast into slavery and the curses came upon us. 
So we're serving our time, our sentence. Read that, Deuteronomy 30. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee. Well, all what things? Read. The blessing and the, the curse. The blessing happened under King David as well as King Solomon. For 80 years, we have the kingdom of heaven, which is Israel, New Jerusalem. It's not talking about you die and you go in the sky. No, heaven and thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in the heaven. So the kingdom is going to be on earth. The kingdom of heaven is rulership, power on earth. Right. Read. Which I have set before thee. So it says the blessing and the curses, which he set in the book of Deuteronomy 28. Read. And thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations. And we shall call the blessings as well as the curses to mind amongst all the what? Nations. All the nations. Why? Because Israel was scattered amongst what? All the nations. Look at the roadmap of the transatlantic slave trade. It went into all nations. No other nation on this earth went slavery consists of them being put on ships and going to China, going to uh, Russia, going to France, England, America, North America, Sa South America. That's biblical prophecy talking about our people. And shall be going to what? And thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. So it's God drove, drove us by what? Cargo slave ships that we read in Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Read. And thou shalt return unto the Lord thy God. And we shall return unto him. Repent. Read. And shall obey his voice. And obey his voice. Read. According to all that I command thee this day. Mm -hmm. Thou and thy children, mm -hmm. with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Read. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. When, the, when you read historically and biblically that the Israelites would ever, was ever turn away from the captivity. You don't read that in the yes. scriptures. They went from captivity to captivity cap to captivity. When was the Israelites placed in, uh, back in their own land and there's no war? Because you think the people of Jerusalem today are the Israelites. No. This, Isaiah chapter 2 says there will be no more war. There will be no more fighting. So why, is we still, why are we still fighting? Why is it still war? Because the true Israelites was not placed back into the land. If you want to go to a prophecy in Isaiah chapter 2, let me just read, I'll finish okay. this down and get your question. Read. And we'll return and gather thee from all the nations. Wait a minute. God will turn, return, and gather us. That's what the whole salvation is of Christ. He will return and gather us from where? All the nations. That's the transatlantic slave trade. We were scattered to all the nations. Christ's return will get is, is the, ret the return of Christ is gathering us from all nations. Read. Whither the Lord thy God have scattered thee. Where God scattered us by cargo slave ships. That's why we need salvation. Read. And if any of thine be driven out uh, unto the utmost parts of the heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee. God says he doesn't know, care where he scattered us, where those cargo slave ships went. Ten minutes. Read. And from thence will he fetch thee. He said it doesn't matter where, he's going to gather us. That's what salvation is. To be saved, you have to be placed in some type of detrimental situation. Something traumatic had to happen to you in order to be saved. That's the very definition of being saved. Who needs more saved than our people? Look at the Native Americans <laughs> on the reservations. They're suffering from alcoholism, drug abuse, rape, human trafficking. You don't think they didn't need saving? This was their land. They're from the tribe of Gad. Look at the Latinos. They're being kicked out of the country. They're trying to seek refuge, asylum. Look at the blacks. Mass incarceration, police brutality. What, what people more than other than us need salvation? We need to be saved from the land of our enemies. Read. For far. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. That's what salvation it is. The Lord thy God will bring thee into the land of what? And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. That's the new covenant under nine Christ. Nine minutes, nine minutes. The new covenant is being brought back into our homeland. The first covenant was under Moses, or animal sacrifice. The new covenant is with Christ. But the eternal promise is immortality this time. Our own kingdom, our own government. Rule forever, rule the earth in righteousness. Not with this filth. We talk, we preach Christianity, we preach under the guidelines of Christianity, but look at all this filth that's going on in the Christian church. Look at it. Look at it. You see the hypocrisy in Christianity? God's law is done away with. That's the problem. God, we don't have to keep God's laws. That's why we're in the problem. That's why we need predicament today. God's law is done away with. But yeah, if God's law is done away with, then I can kill, I can rape, I can, mar I can rob, I can murder. And don't tell me these common sense. Because we get all of our sense from the Bible. All the laws, America's laws, and judicial laws, our, anything, morality comes from the Bible. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. But you said God's laws done away with it. That means I can rape. That means I can kill. That means I can steal. That means I can eat anything. That means I can eat feces. If you want to go that far. That's what, that's, that's what you're saying. Read. And thou shalt possess it. 
and we shall possess Israel. Read. And he will do thee good and mm -hmm. multiply thee above thy father. Mm -hmm. Three minutes. Read. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the to love the Lord thy God with all. He will all circumcise our heart. He will give us a heart of understanding. So when it comes to salvation, that's all I want on that. When it comes to salvation, I'm, I'm addressing him. Okay. So when it comes to salvation, the scriptures make reference to salvation being saved from our enemies and all that hate us. You see what's going on. That's why we need salvation. None of us have been saved. We're still slaves within this country. Thank you, sir. Yes. There are two questions. Yes. Your first question, you, you, you did quote <coughs> the verse that said saved from enemies. Mm -hmm. One of the verses that you quoted earlier in uh, Matthew <coughs> chapter 1, yeah, save his people from their sins. Mm -hmm. Are you saved from your sins? I'm still battling my sins. No. Okay. We're not gonna, we're, no, we're not saved from our sins yet. Okay. Meaning, Christ, when he says save his people from their sins, because right now, he gave us a, a chance and opportunity. Give me Hebrews 10 verse 28. He gave us a chance and opportunity to give repentance. Because under the a covenant of animal sacrifice, did we have a chance and opportunity? No. If you're a homosexual, if you're an adulterer, if you're a thief, what was the, the judgment? death so when christ came he gave us a chance to repent that's that grace period to give us the opportunity to repent to get it right before he make his return so this will happen under moses read the book of hebrews chapter 10 verse 28 read he that despised moses law if you despise moses law die without mercy we die without mercy under two or three witnesses so under moses law we die without mercies give me matthew chapter 12 now you know what i want verse 31 yeah, I got that. that you, you, you answered that. You said no. So, so here's my question. Wait, I'm not finished. I'll follow up. Read. Matthew 12, verse, 12, verse 31. Six minutes. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 31. Mm -hmm. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. All manner of sins, which you were not forgiven under Moses. Read. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven so unto men. So that's all one of that. So all manner of sin. That's why we will give him mercy. A time period. Grace is a period to get yourself right. Okay. Can you read, since you said that you're not saved from your sins, can you read 1 John 1, 9 and just give me your mm -hmm. breakdown okay. on that? If that's applicable to you. Me, we're still, listen, we're still battling us. I mean, the thing to be saved from our sins is to give us a, a grace period to get ourselves right. Because think about it. When you read the book of Acts chapter 5 verse 1, when Ananias and Sapphira, when they lied, what happened to them? When Ananias and Sapphira lied, what happened to them? No, let's answer one person at a time. Let's answer his question first. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know I'll how read that. I'm being asked the question. No, no, the reason, the, the reason I'm saying that because... You asked me a question. Yes. Hang, hang, oh, all right, all right. Hang on. I'm, 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 reason, go. I mean, that's fine, though. Yeah. The book, of, the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9. Read. If we confess our sins, mm -hmm. he is faithful mm -hmm. and just to forgive us our sins. Yeah, we are getting forgiven for our sins. Okay. Now, if you, now, this is now. That's why we have that grace period. We are getting forgiven. But if you decide to go in your sin and you don't come out of that sin, okay. you're not going to be forgiven when Christ comes. Okay. You're going to be put to death. Mm -hmm. right. The wages of sin is what? Death. Okay. So that's what grace is. Give me so that. So we are saved from our sins. He gave us an opportunity. He gave us that grace period. But now, if you commit, if you stay in your sin. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about he, he's, if we he's giving us grace. Sin, He'll forgive us. Yes. So we're, we're delivered because we have forgiven. Titus 2 verse 11. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. So the mercy is supposed to give us salvation. Read. Have appeared to all men. All Israelite men. Read. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. It teaches us to deny ungodliness. Now you might say all men make reference to everybody. Just listen. It's basic, it's basic English comprehension. We read a book. At the beginning of the book, you establish the characters. And then once you go on further in the book, you don't keep on saying Tom, 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 Tom. You replace it with pronouns. You replace it with he, they, them, all. That's basic English um, knowledge. Okay. Read. Teaching us that denying ungodliness mm -hmm. and worldly lusts, mm -hmm. we shall so live So grace so is supposed to teach us worldly lust to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. Read. We should live soberly. We should live soberly. Read. Righteously. Righteously. And godly. And godly. In this present world. In this I'm present coming world. Coming up to three minutes. So if you're not keeping God's commandments, you're not going to get the kingdom. So he gives to be saved from our sins. It's to what? Give us an opportunity, that grace period to get okay. ourselves right. Thank you. Thank you. Which you couldn't be given in Moses. Okay. Yes. Uh, one, just one last Yes. Time. Could you read Ephesians chapter 2? Mm -hmm. Verse 1. 11, uh, 11, oh, verse 11 through 13. Yes. And just... Give uh -huh. a breakdown of who, yes. who are the Gentiles yes. and uncircumcised. Yes, in this text. read that. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. 
Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles. Now, that's the cut. Wherefore, remember. Paul is calling the people in Ephesus in which he's speaking to. He's calling to call something in remembrance. Read. Being in time past Gentiles in, in time the flesh. Past. Paul does just have to make anything up. He's making reference to a specific, specific event in his historical event. If you don't have the Apocrypha, when you read the book of Maccabees, it talks about the Greek captivity. When Alexander the Greek came into power and he Hellenized the nations. And not only did he Hellenize the nation, but the nation of Israel was Hellenized. Meaning they took on Greek uh, philosophy, they took on the Greek gods, they took on the Greek practices. They became Gentiles when we read 2 Maccabees chapter 6 verse 9. But you don't have that history. That's a problem. If you don't read the Apocrypha, that's why I'm not sure if you guys ever read the Apocrypha. Because you read Greek. Huh? Spores. That's what Apocrypha. you said. But in order to, you cannot go from the Syrian captivity to the um, Babylonian captivity Babylonian. to the Persian and Mede captivity. Then you go in the Matthews, you're in the Roman captivity. Right. You can't skip the Greek captivity. Right. Where in the Bible is the Greek captivity? It's in the Apocrypha. And that's why you don't know where the Gentiles came up. That's why you know so why. So Gentiles don't mean Gentiles in that verse is what you're saying. The Gentiles in this verse is making reference to the Israelites. So it doesn't mean. I'll say it again. Let me allow, let me flesh. answer it. So the Gentiles is making reference to the Israelites that took okay. on, that was assimilated. Even though, even I'm, talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. You're, you're being distracted. Okay, now the Gentiles in that verse is making reference to the Israelites okay. that was assimilated. Okay. Uh, can I finish? <laughs> the Israelites that was assimilated into Greek customs, to Greek okay. society. Right. Now move on. Okay. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Because under the Greeks, we were assimilated or we were Hellenized. We took on the customs. Read. Who are called uncircumcised. Who are called uncircumcised because not only were we assimilated, but we were the Greek. The law was that we could not be circumcised. So many of the Israelites did not circumcise themselves. And we did not take on the covenant of circumcision given by Abraham. But yeah, many Jews that held true to the covenant of circumcision. And many Jews that didn't circumcise because of the Greek laws. Read. By that which is called the circumcision. Because the circumcision, which is the Jews, read. In the, in the flesh. The circumcision, literally in the flesh, meaning your penis, your foreskin. That's why they call the circumcision, which were the Jews that took on the covenant of circumcision was given to Abraham. And then you have the Jews that did not circumcise after the Greek captivity. So you have the southern kingdom, was called the northern kingdom, uncircumcision. Because they didn't uphold the, the um, law, the covenant of circumcision. Read. Made by hands. Made by hands. Are Literally talking about penis circumcision. Read. That at the time you were without Christ. Because they were out Christ. They went off. They went to Greek philosophy. They went to the ideology of the Greeks. They weren't keeping the laws, read. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. They were strangers from the nation of Six, Israel, five, read. And strangers four. from the covenants of promise. They were strangers of the covenants of promise. So they were aliens, because why? They had the split of the kingdoms, right? They went off with Jeroboam. They went to idolatry. And then when the other nations came into rulership, they went further into their sin. And then when the Greeks came into rulership, they were Hellenized. They were called Greeks. They took on all the customs of the other nations. Okay, your time's up, my brother. Yes. Thank you. Hi, Brother Reggie. Alright, y'all got questions for me? Um, you guys? You got a question? Yeah. yeah. This yours? Yes. <coughs> Alright, just real quick, I just want to know um, about the because he went into the identity of our, and you're questioning that identity in Deuteronomy 28. So uh, I wanted you to see what you thought of Daniel chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. I questioned what identity? The, uh, that we that we that we are the Israelites. You're saying Deuteronomy 28 doesn't apply to us. That, that's what that's the just. You talking about you? To us. You mean everybody. you mean that as as black all, people? All, all all of us. Yes. Okay. Deuteronomy 28. I, I, you're, I, you're, I, saying, you're saying you said that it that doesn't, have, that doesn't have anything to do with the transatlantic slave trade. And all that. <coughs> so that's what you're well, saying. Well, I explained that. So I said. I, just I said. Actually, you answered your own question. I'm gonna tell you how. In the transatlantic uh, slave trade, I mean, this ain't really a Bible question. Now we're outside the Bible. So in the transatlantic slave trade that you tried to use Deuteronomy to suggest, that's what it's talking about. The question is, where were the slaves brought from and where were they brought to? Now, the terminology that the brother used was America was spiritual Egypt, right? That's on tape. Right? Yes. And I'm saying the Bible don't say that. So, so since the Bible doesn't say that, 
I, this is my answer. You ain't got to agree. We share, no, no, bro. No, 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 no. So, I mean, yeah. I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's that's my answer. And my limited understand. understanding where they brought the slaves from had nothing to do with this property because these slaves coming from Africa to America rather than we talking about people. Remember what he said to him. He said, you were there and you're going to go there again. So we're talking about a, a bloodline of Israel who was delivered by Moses, who God said, you disobey, you will go there again. Not people coming from Africa that didn't even claim to be. These people that, that were brought here, our forefathers, Nat Turner, whoever it is you want to talk about, Harriet Tubman, they didn't say that they were Israel, did they? They didn't say they came from over there. So that, I mean, that's not a Bible question, but... I don't see anything about spiritual <laughs> Egypt. That's a bad interpretation in, in my understanding. Go ahead. All right, I understand. Here's the point. Uh, while spiritual Egypt is in the Bible, when you read Revelation chapter 11, mm -hmm. that's number one. Okay. So you said that's a different Bible, context. That, you know, that is the same context. But number two, um, Daniel chapter 9, verse 11. All right, let, I, I tell you what. That. Let's, let's do this. Okay, now let's do this. Since you said spiritual Egypt is talking about America, that's what I said. Quote me right. I said, spiritual Egypt is not talking about America, how he used it in the Bible. So when I say that's not in the Bible, that's what I mean. That's what you mean. Understood. Okay. Daniel I wanted, nine, wanted to be clear. Okay. Well. All right. Get that. Daniel chapter 9. And, and the question on this. 12 minutes. <laughs> I, just, I just want to know what, what, what do you think of that when, um, when, you fin fin when he finishes reading it. I okay. I want to know what you think. Daniel chapter 9 and verse. 11 and 12. 11 and 12. Uh-huh. Yay. Yay, all Israel had transgressed the law, mm -hmm. even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us, uh -huh. and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, mm -hmm. the servant of God, mm -hmm. because we have sinned against him. Okay. Verse 12, <laughs> and he have confirmed his word, which he spake against us, and against our judges, that to judge us by bringing upon us a great evil from under the whole heaven has not <coughs> been done as had been done upon Jerusalem. Okay. What's, what's the question? The last part right there that he just read. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. <coughs> I just wanted to know, knowing the history of our people, have you seen or have you ever heard of another people that have gone through worse history that you could think of well, well, in the world? Okay. I need you to qualify something because you're, you're trying to formulate a question and it, it sounds like you already, you've conceded that Deuteronomy 28 ain't talking about the slaves being brought from Africa. Is that what you're saying? I haven't conceded anything. Well, is that what you're what? saying? No, not at all. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, 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 oh. So I got, I got to understand you for us to communicate. If you're not saying Deuteronomy 28 is talking about slaves being brought from Africa to America, then what's the question? Because that, that, let me finish. That's the verse, and it's on tape. The verse that was used, and maybe it was a slip of the tongue, I don't know, but it's on tape. The verse that was used was Deuteronomy 28 to say, this is talking about the Atlantic slave trade, which would be the slaves coming to America, and even though it said Egypt, that meant spiritual Egypt. That was my understanding. Maybe I'm wrong. Is that accurate? The correct understanding is based upon precept upon precept when you read the Bible correctly, that Egypt is talking about the another Egypt, which is America today. Mm -hmm. But what I'm asking about is Daniel chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. Okay. Again, I'm going back to that. Okay. Because you keep trying to go away from it. Daniel chapter 9 verse 12 says, <coughs> Under the whole heaven have not been done as hath been done upon who? The people of Jerusalem. That's, okay. That's, that I just want to All right, go, go back up to verse number 11 you, and come you know, down again. Do you have a history of another people that has gone through Oh, that's your question. Yes. Do we have what? another, do we have a history of people that have gone through what? Uh, what because this is talking, what, we've gone through. what I'm saying is now, now you're bringing something in that's yeah. not in the text. Read verse number 11 again. What is the text talking about? Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Yea, all Israel had transgressed against thy law. So, 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 thy so, law. so we're talking about transgression. Are you saying this is talking about slavery? Trans is that your question? That was not my question. Okay. Uh, so, so, what is, what is transgress trans sin? Trans <laughs> <laughs> Israel sin. I'm not 
dispute that. Which is the breaking of God's laws. Sure. But again, we're going, I want you to go to the end of verse 12. Okay. Verse 12 wow. Okay. Okay. But you understand 11 and 12 go together. Even though man yes, that's broke right. it down yes. into chapters yes. and verses, yes. it's a complete thought. Right. Correct. Right. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, verse 12. <laughs> and he has confirmed his word, which he spake against us and against our judges mm -hmm. that judged us mm -hmm. by bringing upon us all by bringing upon us great evil, for under the whole heavens has not been done as been done upon Jerusalem. All right, keep reading. Verse 13. Uh -huh. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil is come upon us. Uh -huh. yet many, all this what? All this evil is come upon us. So you saying Daniel was a slave brought to America? <laughs> Sir. No one said anything like that. You, uh, let, let, let me just go ahead, go ahead. The same question. Who does Deuteronomy 28 fit on this earth? Because that's, pro that's prophecy. Right. What people on the earth does that fit? Okay, that's your question? Okay, that's your question. I already answered that. Well, I said you, you made the statement that fit. The slave trade of people coming to America. All right, historical oh, speaking. Oh, that, okay, you gonna let ahead, me answer? I mean, like now when go you ahead, talk, go you ahead, went, go ahead, you go went ahead. on and on with go your ahead. explanation. Go you, ahead. You, yeah. Just give me the say. I mean, go ahead. we ain't go gonna ahead. agree I today. Go ahead, we just right. want to listen. You gonna go? You made the statement that Deuteronomy 28 was about the slave trade and Egypt when the slaves were brought over from Africa to Egypt. You pretty much said that was a prophecy about <laughs> America. What I said was. It wasn't, in my understanding, whether you agree or not. I said that it wasn't. That's something y'all interpreted with no biblical proof because when Deuteronomy was written to <laughs> Israel, they ain't know nothing about America. So, so now what the real deal is, you mean to tell me he said something to them that they would be brought back again into slavery, but it really meant people... 1,500 years later, that will be brought to America? So how would they understand it if it didn't apply to them? That's my answer. So, no, it don't apply. Go ahead. Now, biblically speaking, when did the Israelites ever go to Egypt with ships? Biblically speaking. So, you say it doesn't apply. So yeah, it when, don't. So when, it doesn't. When did that prophecy come to pass? It doesn't. When did the prophecy it come to pass? It didn't. So it never came to pass? Nope. So when is it going to come to pass? It's, it's prophetic. So... Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.